Well, welcome to MissouriNet.com. I'm Bill Pollack, and we are in our fourth and final series of Google Hangouts with the Missouri Department of Conservation. And joining us is the state wildlife veterinarian for the MDC, Kelly Straka. Kelly, thank you for joining us on uh, this final Hangout. Glad to have you with us. Well, thanks for having me, Bill. I'm happy to be here. We uh, talked last week with Jason Sumners, who is the uh, deer biologist, and, and we talked about managing wildlife populations and, and things like that. As the, the state vet, um, what types of wildlife diseases and health issues are you dealing with? You know, the, the one thing I have to say about my job is, is it suits me very well because I, I have a very short attention span and, and the beauty of my job is that I deal with everything, any, any fish or wildlife species, any disease you can think of. So it's, it's nice. I get a little bit of variety on a day-to-day -day basis. Probably the, the biggest news for me right now in the wildlife health arena in the state is our reintroduced elk population. You know, we brought um, elk over three years in a row from Kentucky, and we're just kind of wrapping up the end of calving. So we've got quite a few new elk calves on the ground down there um, around the Peck Ranch Conservation Area, and there's actually an elk viewing route, so people can go down there and drive around and hopefully, hopefully catch a glimpse of some of these new little calves on the ground. Um, that route is closed right now for flooding but it should be open soon, so I recommend people call ahead of time and, and make sure it's open and they can go ahead and, and, like I said, hopefully catch a glimpse of some little guys out there. One of the things that we want to talk about is, um, it, and we've mentioned it on other Google Hangouts, is CWD or chronic wasting disease. Can you talk about that? Sure, absolutely. Chronic wasting disease is a, it's a very challenging disease. It, it only affects cervids, so members of the deer family, deer, elk, moose. Um, it's a fatal neurologic disease. As of right now, we believe that it's fatal in every animal it infects, every deer it infects. Um, there are several complicating factors with this disease, one of which it's chronic. I mean, the answer is in the name. It's a chronic wasting disease, so it's a very slowly progressive disease. Animals can be infected for a long time before they show any clinical signs, but again, it's always fatal. Another problem is that there's no live animal test for the disease right now, nothing that's approved. So it's really hard to, to tell just by looking at an animal if they're infected or not. Uh, the biggest problem with that, obviously, is that they can still spread the disease. Even, even if you can't tell that they're sick, they can spread it to other animals they come in contact with. The disease can also be spread either through direct contact, animal to animal, and it can also come from the environment, so contaminated food, water, and, and contaminated environment in general. So it's a very scary disease. We have found it in, I believe, about 22 states now in the country, and one of the biggest problems we see with it is that over time it tends to increase in both geographic spread as well as prevalence. So prevalence just meaning the amount of disease that's out there right now. Um, as your prevalence increases, more and more animals become infected. And some of the areas of the country that have had chronic wasting disease for a longer period of time, they're seeing you know anywhere from 50% prevalence in, in areas of Wyoming to 25% prevalence in some areas of Wisconsin. So it's a, it's a scary disease and a very challenging disease for, for wildlife folks to deal with. We're talking with Kelly Straka, the state wildlife veterinarian for the Missouri Department of Conservation. So people watching this will say, all right, so how does this affect me? How do these diseases affect me, whether, whether you're a hunter or not? Yeah, absolutely. The hardest thing is that we don't know a lot about the disease yet. You know, we, we, we're not quite sure exactly how, where it came from, how it spreads. Probably the, one of the biggest fears that I have is that if we do see increasing prevalence of the disease, you can start to see sick deer on the landscape. And it's a, it's a horrible thing to see. It's a horrible thing to watch. These animals literally waste away, and there's, there's a lot of suffering involved. So from a veterinary standpoint, it's, it's definitely something that we want to try to get under control and, and hopefully eradicate as soon as we can. Um, because it's it really is a hard thing to see these animals suffering. Does it affect uh, or can it affect pets, uh, water supply, things like that on on someone's land? So as of right now, there's no evidence that it can infect you know dogs, cats, even cattle, horses. There there really hasn't been any examples of it infecting other species outside of the deer family. But like I said, it can contaminate water supplies and the environment. Now, the one thing we have to keep in mind is that you know just because uh, some of these, it's caused by an abnormal protein, just because some of these proteins might be shed in a, in a water source, fortunately, you know, dilution will help, help a lot of that. So, but the, it is a concern that it can contaminate the environment. What about for hunters if they shoot a deer that has 
this disease or signs of it or and and then they they go through the meat processing is is there a danger of ingesting that meat if if a deer is infected so as of right now the CDC believes the CDC is doing a which is the Center for Disease Control is doing a lot of active research for this very question because there is a concern you know we don't know if it can really cause any human health impacts to this point there's been nothing proven so I want to be very clear in that there's no evidence that humans can be infected with chronic wasting disease but again it is a very active field of research so our best recommendation is use very common sense when you're, especially if you're field dressing an animal, we recommend not cutting through certain tissues like the spine, um, eyes, lymph nodes, things like that. So there, we have common sense guidelines on the MDC website too for, for hunters when they're field dressing their animals. Talk about some of the measures that the Department of Conservation is taking to uh, to prevent future threats, whether it's to this disease or, or other things that pop up with, with deer and wildlife. Sure, yeah. It's it's really exciting to me because that's kind of the essence of my position um, with the department. You know, I'm starting the Wildlife Health Program. It's a new program for the entire state. We've got two people on staff right now. 50% of the program is yours truly, so we also have a wildlife health specialist, and she's great with doing a lot of this work. But one of the things the department has done is we've taken some very proactive steps, especially in control of chronic wasting disease. So we have our containment zone, which has been set up. It's a six-county area in the northern part of the state, and uh, that's where we found all of the free-ranging deer that we have found with chronic wasting disease. We're all out of um, a small area in Macon County. So we've got six counties around that area that We've taken some proactive steps such as, you know, removal of the antler point restriction for harvest. We've also removed uh, or we've put a feeding and baiting ban in there too so that we don't congregate animals artificially there. Um, so th those are some of the steps we've taken for chronic wasting disease. Now other diseases, and there are many, you know, there are many I deal with, we do a lot of active surveillance and and um, I do some post-mortem surveillance of animals that have passed away, you know, trying to figure out what diseases could be on our landscape, what do we need to be looking out for, and we network with neighboring states to see what they're seeing in their wildlife populations and whether or not we can have some of the same disease trends here in Missouri. I want to go to the deer open houses that have been going on, and I know that over these now four Google Hangouts, we've really stressed for people to take part in that, and we'll talk about the comment cards. and. Um, how can people find out more information about this in, in deer population and health and what types of questions may be asked and, and answered at, at one of these open houses? Yeah, the open houses are great. I, I So I came from Minnesota in 2012, and the one thing I will say about Missouri and about our department is that we take our public input very seriously, and all these open houses that we put on and, and all the, the work we do with surveys and, and trying to contact our hunters and outdoor recreationists alike, I mean, it's it's brilliant our how our department goes about that. So these open houses that are going on right now are, are basically to discuss some of the proposed regulations for our deer harvest and um, future hunting seasons. So there are four, I believe there are four um, of these open houses left. One of them is today in Lee Summit and also next week, July 7th through 9th. There'll be one in Hannibal and then uh, St. Joseph and Columbia. So if anyone can can attend any of these open houses. Basically, we'll have all kinds of MDC staff there. Our deer biologists will be there to talk about some of the proposed hunting changes and regulations, and people can ask questions and kind of weigh in and let us know what you're seeing out there on the landscape, whether you're a hunter or not. It's important to help monitor and regulate some of these populations so that they can, you know, grow to the best of their abilities. So it's it's a really great system I think we have in place having these open houses. Kelly, what are some things that, as the state wildlife veterinarian for the Missouri Department of Conservation, what are some things that the, the public can spot for you that could that could help you? Things that you know we can keep our eyes out for. No, oh, geez, I, you know, I'm I really am lucky in that I talk to people pretty much every day. My phone's always ringing, my email's always going off. People notify me all the time. If you see any. If you have any disease concerns, if you see any sick wildlife, if you're concerned for the health of your your pets or your livestock, absolutely, you know, give me a call and, and we can talk about things and I can direct you to some other resources. I work really closely with other state agencies such as the Department of Agriculture or Department of Health. But but primarily, especially if you're seeing any any sick or injured wildlife, um, you can notify your local conservation agent or you can notify me and, and ask some questions about disease. So that's that's basically how I get a lot of my work now is people call me and, and have random questions about things and send me emails and I really appreciate that because it lets me know what, what people are seeing in the landscape. 
That's great. It's like having yeah. a, a doctor that can make house calls all over the state. That's that's perfect. Yeah, except for the fact that I just have to sit behind a computer, so it's not that exciting for me. But but no, it's it's really good actually to talk to people all over. So and I, I try to get out when I can. So if anybody needs me to make a house call, you know, <laughs> get me out of the office for a little bit. But it's great. It's, <laughs> it's good. It's a, yeah, talking to really good people. Hey, talk about the the comment cards that the department is asking the public to fill out, and and that's been a big push for you guys. Just expand a little bit on that. Sure. We actually, the commission passed at the beginning of June, the commission passed some proposed regulations for chronic waste from disease, as I talked about earlier. Um, and these comment cards are basically looking to figure out, do you support some of the recommendations that are that are being considered right now? Um, to take proactive steps to control this disease. You can go on, you can weigh in, you can put your comments, you can um, answer a few questions on there. So those comment cards, we really, we're hoping that people can can respond to us. You can find it online. Um, I think you have the website, but it's mdc.mo.gov and then backslash Dear Health. Uh, you can go in and enter your comments and basically we're entering a 30-day comment period where the department will compile all the responses and they're you know they're anonymous but you can compile all the responses and and the commission will consider those for these 30 days starting July 16th when we actually move forward with some of these proposed regulations. Well that's good stuff. Kelly Straka, the state wildlife veterinarian, busy, always busy from Minnesota, huh? Yeah, oh yes sir, way up north too. Pretty near Canada. <laughs> oh really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Summers must it must take a while to get so, the humidity, huh? Yeah, it's funny actually. They they had to shut the air conditioning off in this room because it was too loud, and the whole time I was like, "You don't want to do that. You don't want me to get warm. It's not pretty." <laughs> That's good stuff, Kelly. Thanks a lot for your time. Uh, very informative, and um, as you mentioned, that website for the Deer Health and and comment cards that's linked at MissouriNet.com with this hangout too, so our viewers can check it out that way as well. Kelly, thanks a lot for your time. Anytime, Bill. Thank you. And thanks for watching us here at MissouriNet.com.